some people think that once you go to jail or prison, you're, you're a changed person. You're never going to have the same thought process. You don't need a promotion to have a win. I made it all the way to work without having to stop at a red light. That's a win. <laughs> Waking up, being thankful for things, turns your day from a 80% day to a 120% day, just like that. Hey, prior to joining Leaders of Tomorrow, can you tell me a little bit about your your outlook on life, your plans, your kind of where you think you were headed, and maybe how that's changed through this? Um, right before Leaders of Tomorrow, I uh, I got a promotion at my job. I'm now a lead man out at night forever at our sand plant, and honestly, I I want to give more back to the community now. My long-term plans before were just to start a business and be my own boss. That might be pushed down the line a little bit. I wanna, I wanna work, get more experience with other people, working in a higher up structured environment and implement those traits that I'm learning in, into my community. I think that's a great point because a lot of times, and that's what I love about Leaders of Tomorrow, like we look at just ourselves, right? And just how, what's best for us or, or what do we need? But then to take that mindset of what the lessons we've learned and put that back out to the community to make a difference for somebody else. I just think that's an awesome, awesome point you made. And I think that's really cool. So growing up, we all come from different backgrounds and in different circumstances. So how you came up in, in your background, do you think that set you up for success or for failure? Or what, what are your observations on that? Honestly, I thought it set me up for failure. Um, what, at a younger age, my parents split up and you know I thought I was one of those kids. Well, and I didn't realize it, it that gave me certain opportunities, different viewpoints from, you know, Everyone always talks about one side fighting with the other. And it's not always that. Both of my parents loved me and they just fell out of love. And it took, it took a few years for me to realize that. And after my realization of that, it, it turned my negative outlook into a great positive how old are you when your parents got divorced? I was 11 or 12. Yeah, and I think young it's age. like the impact that that has on kids sometimes. But so my parents got divorced, but I was like 24, 23, right? And it's just a different period in your life and a different thing, but it still has an impact on you. But I can make the same observation. I look back to both my parents, how they poured into me, how they loved me and the lessons that they taught me. And, and they're both important for, for my success too. And I think that's, that's a, a cool observation and something that I think, you know, when we come from different backgrounds, our stories are similar, but very different and each circumstance is, is different. So, cool. Um, prior to Leaders of Tomorrow, do you feel you've been supported by the system or the community to find a path towards success? So. I, I was told, basically, if I want to break it down, um, bef before Leaders of Tomorrow, I was told, uh, you have these roads over here you can take, or you can take that one road that you've been down five or six times. Uh, Leaders Tomorrow took that group of roads and instead of turning it from a direction, they, they narrowed it down to, they all end up mostly at the same place. It, it, it's just, it, and it's not always getting there. It's bringing other people with you and allowing you to enjoy it on the way. Don't focus on just the destination, yeah. the, the journey and bringing people that support you and are like-minded is 90%. Yeah, you know, I think within that journey lies the knowledge that you gain. We get so fixated on the goal, right? Exactly. But the journey of getting to that really and the lessons and the struggles that we have on the way are really, are really formative to us. And I think it's something that we sometimes lose sight of. And I think sometimes what we lose sight of is I think when you're from your perspective and maybe you can tell me this or not it feels like people maybe don't want you to succeed right and i don't know if that's ever happened to you but i think from my perspective like i see people pour in and i think 
there's a lot of people within our community who want to see people succeed. They want to see them successful. And for me in law enforcement, I think it's something I want to tell people is like, we, we want you to be successful. Like we want people to make positive gains. We want people to go out and contribute to their community. But sometimes we get lost in that discussion that we don't ever get to make that point. And that's what I appreciated about Leaders of Tomorrow, the chance to come talk to a group and really say, hey, from our vantage point, like we want you to be successful on that journey. You know, even though it's a, it's a tough path sometimes, but it's a path worth taking, right? Yeah, I, I agree. Most people do want to, they want to lift other people up. And it, it's a it's a rarity that jealousy and all those little things. Uh, the the more you express your gratitude and and you know someone does something great and you yeah. you acknowledge that yeah. that doesn't just lift them up it lifts you up. Yeah, I think if you're around people who don't want to lift you up. And you're around the wrong group of people. Exactly. Right? I, exactly. I, I, I rejoice more in the successes of others sometimes than my own because, like, you know, how we helped or to support that person along their way. And, and I think that's a, that's a, a really important point about who we hang around with and who we really have supporting us. So, Leaders of Tomorrow is, is heavy on personal development and discovering your true self. What's something you've learned about yourself and are improved upon to become a better version of you? Oof. That's a, that's a, that's a good one. Um, I realized through Lear's Tomorrow, looking back at that, I realized that I absolutely love helping people. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's that selfish selflessness, um, helping someone out. And I, it, I knew it for a long time yeah it's just i didn't know how much yeah um the little things i helped my neighbor put up his his fence the other weekend yeah after the storm and old me would have sat sat in the window and taken a picture you know, like look at this guy you put it on social media yeah well no around. just send it to my friends <laughs> right, gotcha. um, yeah. but you know a hard days of work hard hard days of work is very enjoyable especially when i don't necessarily uh, benefit from the rewards of it yeah. like a, a good day of blood sweat and maybe a couple tears in yeah. the eye of you know i did that for them yeah. um, it 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 helps me because they they're going to do that same thing they're going to pass it on and do that to the next person. Yeah. And that, that's just growing a great culture yeah. and, and neighborhood, everything like that. So what you're describing to me is what I think of as like a servant's heart, right? So, yeah. So, so you have this urge inside of you, like you want to help other people to serve other people. And within that you find like purpose, right? Yeah. So, and I think that's something that I share with you, like throughout my life, I always like anything that was service related, whether it was some of the trips I went on with my church or something I could help around the neighborhood. Like I always found that extra measure of like, yeah, this is what I want to do. I want to do something that's service related that I know is helping people. And, and I think that's where I found my profession ultimately is that, um, you know, something that was service driven. So I think that's something you and I share. Yeah. If, yeah. Except maybe I wouldn't take pictures of my, we need to talk about that <laughs> it's a, but uh, um, do you feel you've seen a change in your perspective or confidence having gone through this program absolutely um, I didn't notice it blink of the eye it, yeah. it, it's just I mean we took the 16 week long program and at the beginning my confidence I would have said no to this interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, absolutely. And afterwards, yeah. like, what what do I have to fear? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, it's it's hard. Like, I think some people, when we unless we really look inside ourselves, it's like we're guarded with who we are. Like, we're guarded with with our thoughts and our journey, so to speak. But I think for you to get up here and kind of give some stuff that's vulnerable and a good perspective, I think it goes back to your, your attitude of service and trying to help other people. And I think that's, that's awesome. So, um, I hear you, that each week, 
Each week you started out a session with sharing your wins as a class. How has that affected you, your self-esteem, and how has that changed your view on day-to-day -day living compared to before this program? Oh, wins. Um, I, I struggled with the wins thing. I'm like, I don't know how to narrow it down. Yeah. Um, I woke up with an attitude of gratitude okay. daily. But saying it to other people, like I did this, I did that. My my uh, my inner being just grew because me saying, "Oh, I did this, I did that." These little things, big parts of my day. It let other people realize that too. Like, you don't need to buy a new car, or move to a new house to have a, a win. You don't need a promotion to have a win. I made it all the way to work without having to stop at a red light. That's a win. <laughs> um, yeah. the, the, I have thousands every day. And I'm, th you know, instead, instead of looking back and saying, oh, God, please help me with this. Please help me with this. I find myself thinking, like, hey, thank, thanks for letting me wake up in my bed yeah. in my house with food in the table. Like, those are waking up, being thankful for things turns your day from a 80% day to a 120% day, just like that. Yeah, I think it's easy for us right now, especially uh, to get into a negative mindset, right? Because a lot of what makes great news or what makes talking points is, is negativity. But I love your outlook, right? Because rather than get lost in the negative, like find the positive and dwell on the positive. And I think that's a, a great way to go about life. And I find myself doing the same thing. Like we can look at, at stuff that's negative or we can really hold on to the positive. And I think um, a positive mind makes better choices, clearer choices. And, and generally, I don't want things to rob my happiness. I'm sure you don't either, right? No, <laughs> no, I, I won't let little things, I won't let having to stop at one stoplight yeah. ruin my whole car ride. Yeah. Well, so why would I do that with the day? Like yeah. one bad thing happens, I'm, don't let that affect the next good thing. Yeah. That could change your day yeah. if you let it and not have that negative outlook. Yeah. Good point. Point. Um, why do you feel like a program like this is important to have available for those who have been impacted by the justice system? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, a lot of people in the justice system think that they're just a number. Yeah. And here you did your things, go out and do this. Uh, a lot of people that have been put into the system and went through it think they won't change. They're, they don't have an impact. <laughs> that leads to my favorite line, not with that attitude. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're never gonna change if you don't wanna change. And realizing that there, are there's a gra the graduation I went to was amazing. I didn't tell half of the table that I was graduating, mm -hmm. and when they called my name, and I got up there, and yeah. it was great. I I didn't feel that that burden of oh I, I'm a menace to society. Yeah, you know, I I, I felt accepted and part of a group. And the, the leaders of tomorrow group is big and getting bigger. And they don't look down on us as justice impacted. Yeah. We went through the same thing they went yeah. through. And th they were told our best group is this justice impacted. impacted. They want this. <laughs> they want this. Yeah. And you could see it. The energy in that in every week was just amazing. Yeah, you keep hitting on something, and I, I just have to bring it up. Like, you, a lot of what you talk about is positive attitude, I right? Don't, I don't know anything else. I'm yeah. sorry. So, but there's this quote, and I'll probably mess it up, but the spirit of the quote will be correct. But it's like anything can be taken from a person except one thing, and that's their ability to choose their own attitude in any given circumstance to choose their own way, right? Right? And that's what you're saying. I mean, a, a profound writer said this, but you keep saying it again and again, right? Because it's a theme that seems to drive you 
must have been my second cousin. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so, so just touch on like, do you find it difficult to always choose a positive attitude now? Or is the, the tools and equipment that you were given by leaders of tomorrow, does that make it an easier choice? Or is that a struggle for you ever? No, I mean, I have road rage. I, I, I almost- But you don't act on it, right? I almost yeah, right, lift yeah. up my, I roll my window down because yeah. I'm old school. So I actually have yeah. to roll it down. Um, I roll my window down and by the time that breeze hits my face, I'm like, it's yeah. not going to change anything. Why do it? Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I can't really say leaders tomorrow gave me that that ability, but instead of rolling the window down, instead of flipping them off, I wave. Yeah. I, I do I do the South Dakota wave instead of the California, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. it, it's just, they help me realize that I'm doing it yeah. at the time. So um, as formerly being incarcerated, there's some stigmas that society attaches to people who have been on prison, in prison like that. Uh, and what would you like people to know about those in your situation or have been in that, um, like the one you came from? What would you want them to know about people who maybe have these stigmas about people who have been incarcerated? Some people think that once you go to jail or prison, you're, you're a changed person. You're never gonna have the same thought process. And if, if you think everyone looks at people like that, mm -hmm. you're, you're feeding into that little, uh, that little separation of, well, you kind of proven a point. Mm -hmm. to, to set apart that, that little stigma and actually show them a difference, show them that, no, there are people like that. But it, there are people that don't think that. Yeah. And for every hundred people, let's say 20 people think the horrible things about people in jail and, and prison, and 20 people think, oh, they're the best people in the world, you know? They're the kindest, most honest people you know. Yeah. You just don't get on the wrong side of them. Yeah. Then you have that, that middle 60, I have no preference yeah and being incarcerated and having that 20 percent talk to you about that mm -hmm. you're gonna think everyone has that yeah no that's that's a good point i think there's stigmas and different things in life and and we can't choose people's response sometimes right we can't choose how they're going to choose their worldview but we certainly can influence that Right, but by that, because ultimately we look at stuff, but personal interactions go so much further than anything. So to take somebody's idea about what maybe they think about somebody who's been in the justice system and flip it on its head, right? Through your attitude, positivity, and performance, I think is, is much easier than trying to fight stigmas, which are for like maybe for that 20%, like you said, it doesn't matter. You could you could cure cancer. <laughs> there yep. still be a stigma on that. Yep. So. Well, there's this uh, meeting I go to and I, I read out at uh, TLC Tallgrass yeah. last night, and I, I'm gonna butch butcher this quote too, but it was saying, for me being the correct of everyone, and think seeing all of the intolerances in all of the other people, I didn't notice the intolerance in myself. Sure. Who am I to judge people for judging? I, yeah. You just, I have to, I, I am only in charge of my own story. I can't influence other people yeah. by my thoughts. It's just my actions. It's great, great advice. So I understand that the L of the soil process is about looking back to reflect on the 16 week journey you've been on. Um, looking at your growth, seeing that trajectory to look forward to greater levels of confidence. Now that you've completed the program, how are you looking forward? I guess you're already pretty optimistic, but how are you looking forward more optimistically to what lies ahead of you? Looking back at what I've gained from leaders of tomorrow, I didn't realize that I would be given opportunities and 
being able to go to these functions that Leaders of Tomorrow holds, and they're all about giving back to the community. I grew my network of people that positive people in my life grew exponentially and it happened overnight. I didn't realize it until graduation. But also looking back, I realized that there are a lot of people, there were a lot of people in the class that their, their outlook on life grew tenfold. And having one conversation with one person one day can infinite <laughs> like yeah. forever and that whole class is doing that everyone in that class for, from our justice impacted group talks about that class daily to random people yeah. and they look at it and they get a little bit better of attitude and being able to go through and use all of the, the contacts and use the events that they, they offer, who knows where I'll be in 10 years. I, I, I wrote down a five and 10 year plan and it's already changed. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm just sticking to my one year yeah. plan and, and adding stuff to my bucket yeah. list. No, you, you bring up a good point. Uh, you talk about like being in a group setting like some people call it like a cohort of people, right? And I think there's something, because I've been involved in a couple different leadership trainings and stuff where you have a group of people and, and there's something to be said from learning from others, right? So we learn from their successes, we learn from their failures, failures. And I think if somebody said one time, wisdom is, is learning from other people's experiences, not having to experience it yourself. Yeah. So I think from your position, like if you could tell somebody something, like a, a younger version of you, right? Right, yeah. like to have that opportunity maybe to, to intersect with their life. Like, what's some wisdom you would give them? Don't talk as much, listen. Yeah. That, just listen. Listen and watch. Mm -hmm. That's the best advice ever. Yeah, there's a lot to be gained from that. Yeah. Absolutely. So, someone, you you touched on it. Someone's pain, their bad experience in their life. That that I, I I've never felt horrible, horrible pain. I I felt lost and all of that. And seeing a different side of it, like someone losing a parent. I haven't lost a parent. I felt like I have through their experience. If and when my parent, one of my parents passed, hopefully that will help me by, you know, their experiences and how they got through um, the, the loss of a pet. I just got my first dog this spring, and I know it's going to happen, but through other people's experiences, I, I can not, not do away with that pain but I can cope with it a lot easier through shared experience. Well, you're, you're an empathetic, positive guy. I try, I try. Yeah, you know. Sometimes it gets in the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, like I said, we've, we've just met, you know, and we can walk away from this meeting and, and we've learned a little bit about each other, but that's what I'm going to take away. Right. Is like, yeah. And I just want nothing more for than you to be successful and take these lessons and these things you have and, and go out and do great things. And with your service-minded attitude that you talked about, like, um, I'm just excited for what the future holds for you. Well, I'm glad we had this chance to talk. The thing is, not just do good things. Yeah. Teach new things. Yep. Because without teaching it, it will go dead. Yeah. And it's easy to sit on the sidelines, right? It is. And talk about how things should be, right? Yeah. It's a whole other thing to get onto the field and make steps to make them the way maybe you see it can be helpful or, or be out there in the world. So appreciate it. So thanks for your time. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Anytime. Yep.